If you're driving or riding on dirt this summer, don't leave home without the Onyx off-road GPS app. For less than a tank of gas, get access to 550,000 miles of trails and roads and 985 million acres of public land for camping, fishing, exploring, and all of your outdoor adventures. Go to onyxoffroad.com and use the code OJ at checkout for 20% off right now. I'm Matt Sorts, Senior Editor with Expedition Portal and Overland Journal, and today we're here in Central Arizona to talk about ground tents for overland travel. Ground tents are generally an affordable, lightweight, and compact way to provide shelter for yourself while you're traveling in your vehicle. Some of the key things you want to look for, though, when purchasing a ground tent are robust construction, ease of setup, and interior space for yourself and gear. Well, here I am in the Big Agnes Mint Saloon, and uh, this is one of the more unique tents in the test. Um, it kind of like transcends that of a tent and becomes more of like a gathering space, I would say, based on its size. I mean, it is massive, as you can see. Uh, Big Agnes says it can sleep up to eight, and I would believe that. Uh, it's a single wall tent. It's floorless. so. Those are some things that, you know, may be a little bit different for some of you, but that helps this tent save a lot of weight, despite the fact that it's got standing room and it sleeps eight people. You can pack it down into a relatively small stuff sack and it weighs about 12 pounds. So it really doesn't take up that much pack space in your vehicle. Now, because it is a single wall tent, condensation can be an issue. Although in dry environments like this, that's never something that's that's been a problem for me. It has a perimeter kind of flap that helps seal it to the ground and again in snowy environments you could pack snow on that or you could even place rocks on it to kind of help seal the tent to the ground. As far as setting this tent up it's a little bit more complex than some of the other ones. It's really not suited for one person. You really want to have at least two and even then 
it is a little bit challenging to stake it out correctly the first go. You may have to kind of come back to it and adjust some of the stake out points once you've put the pole into the top of the tent to make it pop up. It's got this nice big door. It could be a really good place to sleep a group of people or maybe set up a camp kitchen if you've got bad weather. Um, but because of the more complex setup, it's not a tent that's going to be great for moving around every other night. You're going to drive yourself crazy having to set it up and break it down frequently. So this tent's probably better suited for kind of a base camping scenario where you're maybe going out for a long weekend and just setting up the tent once and leaving it in place. Yeah, the inside of this thing is, is really spacious. So you can see we've got the lower maybe three feet kind of becomes vertical. So it gives you quite a lot of usable space. I mean, okay, my head's hitting the, the ceiling here. But you could imagine putting maybe some chairs around the perimeter of this and packing people in here. So it's got a lot of space and, and I think, you know, good place to like enjoy a meal if the weather's not ideal. You've got some ventilation up here on the ceiling, these two mesh panels. Um, and then you've got a window back here that can zip shut. And you've also got windows on either side that give you some additional ventilation on the sides there and those can be closed right now we have them pulled open with the guy lines um, you know as you can see we've got a floorless tent here so it, we're just on the ground but you know that's okay you can just throw down a ground cloth i really don't mind that very much uh, this tent's got three poles so it's got one central pole and then you've got kind of a super long pole that goes around this rounded part here in the middle and then there's a pole that holds the entryway open you can feel it's pretty warm in here. You know, it's not a super warm day. So as I mentioned, not the best ventilated tent, but um, you know, maybe in kind of the shoulder seasons, a little bit more comfortable. You do get some little tie off points on the inside here. And I believe that allows you to kind of pull the sides up a little bit if you want to allow some air to blow in on the bottom. So Big Agnes calls this kind of a hybrid yurt tent and it, it does kind of feel like a yurt. It's got this one big pole that goes around and elevates it which gives you some nice vertical interior walls. This is going to be one of the slightly more affordable tents in this test at $500. All right so here I am with the Nemo Wagon Top 4. This is a fairly traditional square footprint, four person, three season tent. NEMO stands for New England Mountain Equipment. And this company was founded by a Rhode Island School of Design graduate who wanted to improve upon tent design. And so some of his first tents actually had this very interesting air beam technology. So they didn't utilize traditional poles, they had inflatable air beams. And some people who have had the chance to get their hands on those early early designs really appreciate them for motorcycle touring because they pack down really small and there are no tent poles to deal with. The Wagon Top 4 is a little different though. It's got two big poles that have these plastic hubs. Uh, they're a little cumbersome and strange to look at but once you set this tent up one at once it goes together fairly quick. Uh, some of the great elements of this tent are the vertical sidewalls so when you step inside you realize that much of the footprint of the tent is actual is actually usable standing space. Um, so that is another thing. It has quite a bit of headroom. I think if you are up to about six foot tall, you could still probably stand within the center of this tent. So that's really nice. It just kind of gives you a little bit more comfort. It's kind of nice when you're out for extended periods of time to not have to be crouching every time you get inside the tent. Yep. This one, this one really does feel solid. The material feels a bit heavier than, than most of your standard materials, I think. But the overall, overall, this tent is still pretty lightweight and it still packs down to a fairly small footprint. I mean, you could easily fit this in the back seat of an SUV or even a sedan if you needed to. So, good option for small groups or an individual who wants a lot of space. You know, if you're going solo and you just want comfort. You know, you could set your cot up in here, a little table. You could make it a nice little home. I've, I've slept in plenty of tents that don't give you standing room and it's fine. It works. But like, you know, if you're setting up a base camp somewhere, like, you know, you've got like a holiday week or something and you want to go out for like five or six or seven days, like it's 
really nice to have a tent that you can kind of like move around inside and just have plenty of room. Yeah, this one's this one's nice for that. And then we can easily just remove this if we need to. Let's see. I really like the fact that it's just so simple. It's four stakes, it's two kind of poles. So that makes it pretty quick. And it's manageable as one person. I mean, it would be nice to have two people to put this together, but. The Wagon Top 4 also has some other just great simple features. It has a removable vestibule on the front, which is pretty clever and gives you a lot of space to store gear that you don't want in the sleeping area of the tent. It also has really clever design for the window covers. Instead of a traditional zipper, which tends to fail in a long enough use case because of dirt and the elements, uh, the Wagon Top actually uses an elastic system it's just very clever and simple and works really well in my experience. Um, this tent is, again, a four-person tent, so good for a small family or maybe even an individual who wants a little bit more space. And this tent retails for $550. So right behind me, we have the Seek Outside Red Cliff. This is a hybrid sort of teepee pyramid style tent and it's floorless. So this might be a little interesting for some of you. Um, I've used lots of floorless tents. I really like them. I've found that even with rain and snow and things like that, not having a floor is really not an issue for me. This particular tent is a single wall. So there's no fly or tent body that are separate. It's all one but you do have mosquito netting on both doors, which allows you to open it up for ventilation without letting bugs come in. It pitches nice and tight to the ground, so you don't really get a gap around the outside. Although if you were pitching it on snow, you could pack snow up on the sides if you really wanted to seal it to the ground. One of the most unique things about the Red Cliff is that you can use a titanium wood stove inside it, which is really just such a unique element of this tent. Now, the titanium wood stove doesn't come with it, but you can get it as a package. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, this adds a ton of warmth to this tent if you're using it in cold environments. Uh, you fire it up and within 10 minutes, it's warm, it's comfortable inside. And that's really great because it lets you keep things dry. It lets you uh, remain comfortable in colder environments. One of my friends who's into elk hunting actually turned me on to this tent and he uses it in the fall and winter months uh, with great success. Because this tent's made from a lightweight sill nylon, you're gonna wanna be a little bit more cautious this one if you use it frequently. And as you can see, the setup is a little bit more intricate and is gonna take you some time. So I really like this company, Seek Outside. They're a small cottage industry brand. They're based in Grand Junction, Colorado, where they make all of these tents by hand, which is just really, awesome. It's great to support small companies like that who are doing such great work. So if you're looking for a really lightweight tent, this could be a good option for you. It has room for six adults, but it weighs less than 10 pounds. Uh, if you're hiking in somewhere, if you're doing some backpacking with a group, this could be the tent for you. It's going to retail for $1,700, so it's certainly an investment that you're going to want to take care of. Right next to me, we have the REI Half Dome 2 Plus. This is a tried and true backpacking tent. It's been around since the early 2000s, and uh, this is not the newest one. I, I have to be honest with our viewers. This one I've had for quite a number of years, but the overall design is still very similar to the newest version, which they released in 2020. This tent doesn't offer standing room, but it makes up for that with an affordable price tag. It's $230 and it's just a really functional tent. It takes up very little space in your vehicle once it's packed. It's light, it's, it's under five pounds, so if you're using it with two people, carrying it around like on a backpacking trip or when you leave your vehicle is very easy. It's also quick to set up and easily achieved with one individual. And it has some other great features that I think really make a tent uh, stand out above other tents. Uh, in, in the case of the REI Half Dome 2, we have two entrances, which is really convenient, which means you don't have to climb over your tent mate in the middle of the night if you have to get out. And you also get a vestibule on both sides of the tent, so you have 
actually a good amount of weatherproof gear storage outside of the sleeping area. Inside the tent you get some small pouches where you can keep things like a headlamp or a cell phone nearby. And you also have mosquito netting, so when you open both the vestibules wide during the middle of the day, you get nice ventilation if you have a breeze. As I mentioned, you, you don't get standing room, so that is one of the downsides to a compact backpacking tent like this. But honestly, for people who are traveling in maybe more remote areas or who are just setting up camp for a night at a time and who aren't base camping, that might not be a deal breaker. You might be fine with that. So REI Half Dome 2 Plus. $230, the most affordable tent in our test. So one tent that we don't have here today to show you because I tested it over a year ago is the Hilleberg Karen 3. Hilleberg is a Swedish tent manufacturer and to be honest they produce some of the nicest tents I've ever had the pleasure of using. Now they're quite specialized, and the Karen 3 is a good example of that. It's a tunnel tent, so it's this oblong shape, Hilleberg Karen 3. <laughs> the Hilleberg Karen 3 is a unique tent. It is a tunnel tent, so it, it is long, and it uses three poles that don't cross. So setup is a little bit more complicated, and you have to take into account the prevailing wind direction if you want to have the best stability. But once you set this tent up, it is rock solid, and that's why it's used by polar explorers and mountaineers in some of the windiest locations in the world. Now, I think Scott Brady would be a good candidate for this one. Most overland travelers won't need it, but if you're Scott Brady driving across the Greenland ice sheet, it might be a good choice. It doesn't offer standing room, but it does have a large amount of interior space. The three refers to three people, although I think it's ideally suited to two people plus maybe a dog. It has an inner and an outer tent. So the outer tent is your conventional fly, the waterproof part. But interestingly, the fly is the part that holds the poles. So you can actually pitch this tent without the inner tent, and that gives you a floorless setup that's waterproof. And it's also significantly lighter. But of course you can connect the inner tent, which gives you kind of a cocoon inner section that is cozy and it helps insulate a little bit more. The Hilleberg has these great little design features everywhere, and if you're someone like me who slept in a lot of tents, you'll really appreciate the quality of the craftsmanship. It has great zipper poles, really well-designed vents, smart guy lines, uh, reinforced tent pole sleeves. I mean, everywhere you look in this tent, you find great attention to detail, and that's reflected in the price of $1,135. So this is the Spring Bar Traveler. This is a really cool kind of old school canvas tent. This thing is heavy. It weighs about 62 pounds, uh, but it's fantastic. It is a super spacious tent, 10 foot by 10 foot footprint inside. So you've got plenty of space for you and your family or some friends. It's got a heavy duty uh, coated nylon floor that's super robust. And it's got a duck canvas material for the body of the tent, which is actually pretty weatherproof does a great job of blocking wind. Setup on this tent is fairly easy. I'm able to set it up myself in about 20 minutes or less, but with a second person to help you set it up, it would be even quicker. This is the bulkiest tent in our test, but it's still small enough to pack into the back seat of a Jeep Wrangler if you want. Some of the features I really liked about this tent were the floor to ceiling windows. There's three of those. There's also a nice big door that's easy to walk in and out of. Inside the tent, you've got a gear loft and some organizational pockets to keep track of your little items. So this tent is really built to last. It is one of the most robust, durable tents that was in our lineup. Uh, I didn't ever have any issues with anything poking through the floor or tearing the canvas. Just really inspired confidence in its build quality. Even down to the little stakeout loops, which are made out of metal, this is a really solid tent. Retail value on this tent is $1,300. So as you've seen today, there's a wide variety of styles of ground tents. The most important thing is to find one that's going to work for what you intend to do with it. If you want more information about the tents that you've seen in this video, you can read the ground tent article that was in our summer issue of Overland Journal. And you can also listen to our podcast where we talk at length about the different ground tents that you've seen here today.
given the fact that it weighs under 10 pounds, that's really an incredible <laughs> Yeah. Yep. I'll wait. I'll wait for the windiest moment. Give me the windiest moment. Feels like it's building. It does. Yeah, give me the frontier land where there's nothing, you know? I just want like uncertainty and wild animals and stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna go find the gazelle out there and yeah, oh, you know what? Okay, I've got a good outro. But, but it's not just profanity and nonsense. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's all I got to say about that. Visit expeditionportal.com. Subscribe to Overland Journal. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I think that that's probably the best way to wrap it up. <laughs>